My Doctor Said What is a program for health information. Be careful that if you want treatment and diagnosis of disease, you need to go to your local health care provider. Hi, this is Dr. Frank with My Doctor Said What? My YouTube podcast, 15 minutes every week, comes out new on Tuesdays. You can stream it anytime or you can just listen to it on all major platforms. So Spotify, Apple, iHeart, uh, Amazon, any of those. I'd like to tell you a few things before we get started. Today we're going to talk about the next pandemic. I am not a conspiracy person. I am not a... um, worrisome person i'm not anxious i just want to give you facts from a pathology view of uh, how we got into the last one and how we're going to get into the next one which i hope doesn't come during my lifetime but i'll just go over when uh, not when but what causes them and why we're more at risk than we were before before i say that i'd like to talk about this season's since this is uh, November, almost December, flu, uh, COVID, RSV, all respiratory virus uh, season. First of all, if you're going to be vaccinated by the flu, it'd be nice to be vaccinated before the end of October. Uh, really, later October through March is the respiratory virus season. Same with COVID-19. The new flu vaccines for this year are quadrivalent. They protect against four different types of flu strains that are most common. And they base those on the the southern hemisphere and then what we're going to see in the northern hemisphere since the two are reversed and we're after the southern hemisphere. So that tells us what we think is probably the highest strains of flu that we'll be exposed to. Uh, Flu. COVID-19 and RSV and any other respiratory virus are spread by droplets in the air from you talking, coughing, uh, just being in close contact with people, the moisture, humidity in the air through micro droplets. You breathe them in you, or if they're on any surface and you touch your eye, nose, or mouth, your mucous membranes, you're going to transmit those viruses. Those are viruses um, to uh your body and you'll become infected and how your immune system operates will determine whether you're the severity of your disease and that's the point of vaccines is to uh, kind of supercharge your immune system by showing them an attenuated or weakened virus or structural virus that can't cause the disease and then your white blood cells Uh, B and T uh, cells primarily will mount a defense and will will kill those when they recognize them. The problem with some diseases like COVID-19 that we saw originally hadn't been seen before, immune systems weren't recognizing them in that and they didn't recognize the spikes that went into other cells and destroyed them and caused the illness. And it took a while for us to develop Uh, a more of a herd immunity through vaccination and exposures to the live viruses. Now, the problem with some of these is you may not get that sick from a COVID strain or an RSV strain or even a flu strain or a common cold, which is a form of a, a multitude of respiratory viruses. But you may end up getting a secondary infection if you're run down, your immune system's weakened, or you're immune compromised. You're older, you have HIV, you have diabetes, you have some of these other things that cause issues with your immune system. Um, You'll find if you're obese or if you're um, severely underweight that you're anorexic, then you'll have compromises in your immune systems many times. And so what you'll find is they will... The disease itself may cause problems, but if it doesn't, it can lead to a secondary infection, such as the ear infection or um, more likely an infection of your lungs since it's a respiratory virus. And then you're going to get pneumonia, and that becomes very common. And pneumonia is a bacterial infection normally of the lungs. It can be viral pneumonia, but most of the time it's a bacterial infection. And that ends up um, filling your lungs with fluid uh, to some extent you can't breathe you get headaches really severe headaches and you can't breathe you get winded just walking out of your chair into the room 
if that's the case uh, again any of these things if you have a fever over a hundred for two days if you're a, an adult or a hundred oh uh, a baby over a hundred or 101 they actually get higher fevers um, you need to see your health care provider and whether you do it through telehealth or you do it in person you need to talk to your physician your nurse practitioner or your physician's assistant and get treatment there's antivirals that are out now that help lessen the symptoms of severity and duration of the disease as well as antibiotics for bacterial infections that do the same thing uh, i won't get into all the difference between a bacteria or a virus or a fungi or a yeast but all those are pathogens that means they're microscopic uh, organisms that cause disease in humans now if something's strictly in an animal then it's it can't be transmitted to humans and humans can't transmit it to the animal but we're seeing a lot more diseases that are zoonosis that they transfer from animal to people or people to animals and that's kind of a tricky thing because we live in different environments outdoor versus indoor a lot of things and and that can cause all especially viruses bacteria to a lesser degree and fungi but they're small organisms so they morph very quickly and that leads us into the topic today of the next pandemic i spent a lot of years uh overseas and i've spent a lot of time in uh in uh biological uh safety laboratories of different levels there's four levels one two three and four as you become the the uh organisms of the pathogens become more dangerous and need to be more isolated and more care taken they go up in levels and i can tell you right now human beings make mistakes and you say what credibility does this guy have and i'd ask the same thing there's so many people talking about viruses and pandemics that don't know what a lug nut is much less a virus but i'll tell you this interesting picture if you could see it uh this is me in 1987 the handsome guy on this side of the screen oh nope sorry this side of the screen that's me the youngest guy in 1987 it's hard to believe i'm still alive and look so young <laughs> uh but i could tell you that that was with james watson which was the co-discoverer of dna back in 1953 a nobel prize winner obviously knows more about dna and and the structure of dna than any living human being and then george revisel my good friend and one of my mentors uh the late george revisel he was the discoverer of the first widely available antihistamine benadryl which we still take today and is one of the safest best antihistamines still on the market even over the counter now instead of just prescription but i've spent a long time and i've spent a lot of time in these labs across the world and i can tell you it's not a conspiracy they do gain of function research you've heard that in the news and people go nuts and it and it's some is for legitimate purposes and some is for purposes that may be a little more nefarious in the country's best interest not necessarily in the global population's interest and what they do is they take these viruses or bacteria that may or may not have pathogenic or disease causing uh, ability and they'll splice little sections of dna or rna in the in the uh in context of, of viruses and they'll modify them so they gain new function and that new function is to cause disease maybe they only cause disease in animals and you can make them cause disease in humans maybe they cause mild disease in humans and you want to be much more uh, virulent more potent uh, more easily spread and we have those kind of labs that are all across not this country but the world and different political systems whatever what happens is you just have people that get, can get a little careless whether it's on purpose or not doesn't matter but they escape the confines of those laboratories and <clears throat> you know there's some suspicion that happened with COVID-19 and 
I, my opinion doesn't matter, uh, but it's certainly in the realm of possibility or it's intentionally infected people that uh, it got out of control or out of hand. You would hope that's not the case. <coughs> Biological war warfare, that's what it's based on. And what you find is, think about it. You put virus or bacteria in a water system and you can infect millions of people. Just flu by itself in the last year has caused 60,000 deaths worldwide and 60 million infections. <coughs> and I cough every time I do a broadcast these days. I think my cat, I have a little allergies, is roaming around my little studio here. But with that, I'd say, you know, you need to be cautious. Wash your hands. Make sure <coughs> doorknobs and that you touch. Hopefully you have gloves on or something if it's colder outside. And make sure you practice general hygiene. Do not touch your face, your hands, to touch your eyes, nose, throat, anywhere in your face. If you have that habit, stop doing that. Uh, it's an anxiety thing or whatever. Just don't do it. And if you're closer than six feet, then you can be exposed to whatever that person's had and whatever that person's exposed to, and they can be asymptomatic, have no symptoms, and still be contagious. So when you're in gathering places for public buildings, you hope, like churches and schools and that, that the better the ventilation is, the better chance you have of filtering out some of these things, although specialized filters called HEPA filters uh, aren't in most of those places like they are in hospitals, so you, you get a lot more moving, movement of those. But actually, the droplets, if you can move air and air up and keep it away from breathing zone of people more than six feet away, then you're fairly safe. But you need to be cautious, and you cannot be the person in the bubble. Your immune system will have to do a fair share of work, even if you use good hygiene and what you need to do there. Whatever you do, don't drink or eat after people. That's direct infection. So do not do that. Kids are the worst on that. You know, my grandkids, sticky little hands and everything else, you know, and they want to stick them all over your face and that. And, and I mean, you just make them wash your hands every once in a while. So, and, and don't let them stick it in your mouth and whatever. It's cute when the part, little kid does that, but it's not sanitary. So be careful. Make sure that you, when you've been out in public, that you wash your clothes. And that's the problem with these labs. Uh, somebody doesn't properly dispose of gloves they've used while they're pipetting these pathogens or whatever. It's not disposed of properly. It doesn't go to a, to a secured um, disposal facility. All it takes is one mouse, one rat, one any mammal getting into it and if it spreads and morphs and changes which all viruses and bacteria change very rapidly to try to evade your immune system so they morph over time very quickly as they go through people and go through populations so unless your immune system is doing a really good job and the better that's the better off you are the better your immune system so stay healthy Keep your weight right. Eat a decent diet. Make sure you get rest. When you get fatigued, you're very susceptible. When you're overly hungry or your blood sugar's not right, then you've really got to you got to watch it because you become more susceptible. If you don't sleep, like I said, you're more susceptible. And uh, as long as you're resting well, you're eating well. Balanced. Remember, send your comments and questions to Dr. Frank at MDSWPod at gmail.com.